Well, welcome to Conversational Exposition. Uh, I'm Nate. I'm with David and David here, and uh, we're continuing on our study through Exodus. We've had some time just discussing the priestly garments and their robes and their breastplate and the ephod, and we're going to continue on here at verses 31, uh, talking about just uh, more garments for the high priest. And, and so, uh, hey, David, would you want to read a, a couple of verses for All us? All right, here we go, starting Exodus chapter 28, starting at verse 31, having to do with the robe of the high priest. You shall make the robe of the ephod all of blue. There shall be an opening for its head in the middle of it. It shall have a woven binding all around its opening, like the opening in a coat of mail, so that it does not tear. And upon its hem you shall make pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet all around its hem, and bells of gold between them all around, a golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate, upon the hem of the robe all around. And it shall be upon Aaron when he ministers, and its sound will be heard when he goes into the holy place, before the Lord, and when he comes out, that he may not die. Wow. So you've got uh, this ephod, this apron that he's wearing. Then yeah. he's got like this breastplate, and then now you have a robe that goes over all that? Is that well, no, no, no. Oh, Actually, the robe would go under. Underneath This it. was okay. under, under the ephod, uh, under the breastplate. So gotcha. uh, a, a blue robe is basically what he'd hmm. be wearing here. It's not very much more complicated than that. But what's at the bottom of this blue robe? It says pomegranates and bells. Little dingly What's, balls, you know, just like little that, you know. Pomegranates. Miniature fuzzy dice kind of thing. <laughs> okay, well, look, there's a little bit of a debate as to whether or not the pomegranates hung, you know, like little fuzzy right. ball right. things, or whether they were embroidered on the robe. So, you know, hmm. it, it's not exactly clear on that, but right. one or the other. But in between each design of pomegranates was a... A golden bell. A golden bell. Why? What? what well, what I believe was talking about this when on I, when Sunday I was a, a When I was a kid, which was a long time ago, the, the only people who wore bells, the cheerleaders used to wear the bells on their shoes. You That's know, right. They do that thing. Yeah. That's about the only oh, yeah. thing I remember. Or what, maybe what, uh, what, the bells in the Baptist choir. You know, that they would well, yeah, sing. but they wouldn't wear those. Well, that's true. Okay. That's true. But, yeah. that's true. You're not knocking bell choirs, are you? No, 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 no. Some no. of our viewers might, and listen, those are beautiful things. If you ever heard a good bell choir, it's a great thing. All right? I'm not sure if we'll, move heard one, we'll, we'll move on. We'll move on. on. We'll move on. The, be we'll move the on. bells were were to jingle when they ministered unto the Lord. You know, in particular, going into I believe you talked about it on one Sunday the, morning. Well, that's what verse thirty five says. When, when he they, goes into the holy place before the Lord, and when he comes out, that he may not die. Right. So when he goes into the holy place on the day of atonement to make the sacrifice for himself, or to present the blood of the sacrifice for himself right. and for the people of Israel, that when he goes in there, the priest can hear him moving making, you know, assuring them that he's still alive in the Holy of Holy Place. Because God was very clear, if he didn't do it properly, correctly, he would strike him dead. And so when the bell stopped... Boom. That's rough stuff. Yeah. You, you might have a crash of bells and then nothing. Yeah. That's what you do not want to Did he trip? Hear. What happened? Did he knock something over? No. Now, people want to know, did this ever happen? Do we ever have it recorded on the pages of the Bible that a priest was struck dead, you know, in the Holy of Holies? Do we, do we not, know this? Not in the Word, do we know? No, that's right. It's not included. But, you know, I don't know. But it, Jewish tradition tells us, I think it's Jewish tradition. I, I, I don't believe this is biblical. But they say that they also would tie a rope around mm -hmm. the foot of the high priest so that if he were to die in the presence of the Lord, they could pull him out without mm -hmm. going into the holy place themselves. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a cool picture, the idea of just as the priest was ministering in the holy of holies, or just around, mm -hmm. he's making sweet music, you know? Making sweet yeah, I mean, music, but cool. I don't know how sweet it is when the music is saying, you might die, you <laughs> might die. But look, wouldn't it impress upon him the seriousness of what yeah. he's doing and how he had to be a man who had a clear account before the Lord? Yeah. Uh, this this mm. is pretty impressive, pretty uh, pretty significant. So now, is this we have that whole would, picture. Now, would he wear this all the time, or is it only during priestly service? <sighs> well, okay, only during. No, he wouldn't lounge around the house. Yeah, with I was this. Say, okay, yeah, well, this yeah, was I mean, yeah. yeah, this was. Not, not only was it the work uniform, but I believe not. I can't, but probably only for ceremonial functions. Mm. You know, for the normal daily work of sacrifice, he probably wouldn't wear all this get up. But gotcha. you know, for uh, important occasions and ceremonial functions, yes, then he would wear it. Mm. Okay, so what do we have next? Our next section, starting now at verse 36. Uh, enough with the robe. We move on now to? Go to the turban and, uh, and its engraving. It says, okay. verse 36, 
You shall also make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it, like the engraving of a signet, holiness to the Lord. And you shall put it on a blue cord, that it may be on the turban. It shall be on the front of the turban. So it shall be on Aaron's forehead, that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things, mm. which the children of Israel hollow in all their holy gifts. And it shall always be on his forehead, that they mm. may be accepted before the Lord. Okay, so wow. what are we talking about here? It's like a hat, right? I mean, it's like a big turban that a he wore turban. on his, uh, on his if, head. If I remember right, literally the ancient Hebrew word means something that just winds around. Hmm. And one commentator says that the Talmud tells us that they would use eight yards or meters of material in making this turban. It's kind of heavy. That would go on the head of the high priest. Eight yards? It'd be kind of heavy, heavy, wouldn't it? I mean, it's linen, but still, you know, you're talking about pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. And on the front of it, we read here in verse uh, 36, an engraving that says, Holiness to the Lord, on his forehead. Isn't that so, impressive? That's impressive. So he's got stones on his shoulder right. representing Israel, stones on his chest representing the tribes of Israel, and now he has this thing on his forehead. Above it all. Above everything. On a plate of gold, mm. right? So it would be sort of symbolically first, you see. first on his mind, what? Holiness, Holiness to the Lord. Wow. And that speaks of what's... What should be on his mind, or is that what speaks of him as a person? Yeah, his holiness. Service, what, what, what is, I what think does that both. Speak of? I think I think all the service of the priest had to reflect the holiness of God. But not only that, it had to be true for him as well. Now we're not trying to speak for a moment of some kind of sinless perfection that the high right. priest dreamed, but he had to have this attitude, this passion for holiness unto the Lord, to be separate unto the Lord and separate away from lower callings and lesser mm. interests. Wow. And that, I mean, wouldn't that be a pretty powerful thing? That phrase right there in Hebrew, holiness yeah. to the Lord. Now, how about this one? Verse 38 says, And so it shall be on Aaron's forehead, that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things which the children of Israel hallow in their holy gifts. Well, he had a special role as a priest to bear the sins of Israel. Mm -hmm. Not that he would bear them as a penalty in himself, but he would literally right. carry, carry bear the sacrificial blood mm -hmm. before the Lord that would be recognized by God mm -hmm. on the Day of Atonement. Mm -hmm. Not to wipe away the sins of Israel, yeah. but to cover atonement. them until the perfect atonement of Jesus could be made at the cross. Wow. Okay, so really pretty, you know, dramatic, I think. This, this thing, holiness to the Lord inscribed mm -hmm. on the high priest's, uh, you know, turban, that, that plate that went on the turban. By the way, I, I can't get away from a really, really cool passage in the Minor Prophets. And I, look, I'm going to confess, I can't remember if it's Zephaniah or Zechariah. Mm -hmm. But a Z word, a Z word. Yeah, one of those ones that sounds very similar. In the closing chapters of one of those Minor Prophets, they prophesy a day, which, which I believe would be fulfilled in the millennium, mm -hmm. where holiness to the Lord will be written on the pots and pans of everybody's mm -hmm. house where everything would be as holy and sacred to the Lord as this very precious, beautiful service wow. of the Lord. I think mean, that's a pretty powerful that idea. Is. Yeah. So here we have Aaron, this high priest, uh, this, this robe with pomegranates and bells, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the, the breastplate, the, 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 a sash, a turban, uh, the ephod. And uh, I don't know, think about all these, you know, the, 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 the skillfully woven is of linen, all these precious Precious right. stones. Okay, T towards that end, let's just read this last verse. Verse 39. You shall yeah. skillfully weave the tunic of fine linen thread. Mm. You shall make the turban of fine linen, and you shall make the sash mm. of woven work. Wow. I mean, make it good. Make it right. Use yeah. good materials. Present the whole thing well. This is a serious thing. So you, you're kind of talking about the whole package together, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I am. And it's just like this really a phenomenal sight. If you could, I mean, yes. just imagine yeah. seeing him, the glory, the beauty. This, the, that. And then, I, I don't know, think about Jesus. Well, okay, let, let's make that. that we, we got a, a graphic here for our viewers here, the contrast. This is what the high priest said. You know, that, that could look pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, that's fancier than what anybody in Israel's day would be wearing. Yeah. You know, you think about it, you're talking about a group of nomadic tribesmen and farmers. You know, mm -hmm. I mean... To see somebody dressed like this, it really gives the idea of the words for glory and beauty. Yeah. This whole picture of the high priest together. Man, this, this has it going on. It's got gold. It's got precious gems. It's got fine linen. Mm. Okay, all of that together is a very impressive sign. Very impressive. So now what's the contrast you're, you're kind of pointing to? Well, what I'm trying to say is that you know, there's, here's this priest in beauty and glory, so, so wonderful. But then when we, hear, we think of Jesus arriving in Jerusalem. 
the simple clothing that he wore. We think about Jesus uh, uh, at the cross, at, at his arrest, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Okay, you just, think of the high priest dressed like that yeah. when he went into the Holy of Holies on the Day of Atonement to offer the atonement for Israel. Yeah. What did Jesus look like when he performed the priestly function for us? Bloody, beaten. What was on his head? Fine turban, said holiness to the Lord? Yeah, yeah crown of thorns. Crown of thorns was on his head, and he was clothed in not the beauty and the splendor of the yeah. ephod, but, but with, the, with the purple garment that was just given to him by the, yeah. by the guards. But, by but the even they ripped Romans. that off of him on the cross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And look, I, I don't say this just to sound provocative or, or you know, offensive, certainly not, to our viewers. In, in all likelihood, as Jesus hung on the cross, he was naked. Mm -hmm. Because that's what the Romans did. They wanted to do it as absolutely as humiliating as possible. Mm -hmm. Now, it's possible that as a concession to the Jews and their morality, they gave them at least a loincloth. Mm -hmm. But it was the normal Roman practice to crucify people naked. Mm -hmm. I mean, not only did Jesus not have garments for glory and beauty, what was on Jesus' chest as he hung on the cross? Yeah, S stripes of men. I mean, it's just the, yes. the, the beatings yeah. and the whippings. After he died, a piercing pure side. Ride. A yeah. pure side. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. No, no, no stones on his shoulder, no, no. pressure. Yeah. Okay, but, but nails did, in his hands. Did anybody bear the people of God on his heart and on his shoulders the way that Jesus did? Uh, no. You know, you think about that. He didn't have the same accoutrements that, that the high priest did. But he fulfilled the meaning and the purpose of what the high yeah. priest wore in a greater way than any descendant of Aaron ever did. Yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no sound of bells, but there's a sound of, of a, how a about nail this? being the sound, Yeah, how about that? The sound of a nail being hammered, not just into wood, but through human flesh. Mm. Well, what a, what a contrast. But doesn't this just make us realize that, that there is a glory and a beauty to the work of Jesus on our behalf mm. that far surpasses any human or earthly glory. It's, it's something really significant and, and something beautiful for us to think about. Yeah.